Well, thanks so much. You know, Michael mentioned the long list of unknowns tonight. Who this person is, is there a connection, was this a random attack on Friday, and ultimately what led police uh, to him this evening right around 6.30. Brianna is here with us tonight. Uh, so we're waiting for more information, but I know you were talking to a well-known homicide detective about this case and cases like this in general. What's his take? Yeah, so it all comes down really the, to timing. Mm -hmm. And he has an interesting perspective because he has worked both regular homicide mm -hmm. cases and cold cases, right? And so those are the ones that go on for so long. He talks about how crucial it is to get on a case and go big right away. And I want to actually play some audio from him talking about why it's so important. Okay. Everybody's heard of the first 48, which is the most crucial time uh, to really get out there and canvas and look for surveillance and look at victimology. What, what has the person been doing before they were murdered? Okay, so the, the first 48, mm -hmm. he's referring to the first 48 hours Morris, there. Mm -hmm. Now, we know Lauren's body was found last Saturday, right? And then that's when the investigation really began. We are being told by multiple law enforcement sources that it was DNA that led authorities to this suspect. Mm -hmm. Now, that's important because usually if there is not DNA already in the law enforcement database called CODIS, it would take a lot longer to make a match. So we are hearing that he does have some sort of criminal record and that's why they were able to do a rapid DNA test, mm -hmm. which can take anywhere between 24 hours to five days. It's been five days since she was found and then actually make that match to what's already in the database. So that's crucial here. Mm -hmm. Huge. Let's talk about what police are doing tonight because it yes. seemed like they addressed us because they had to. They wanted right. us to know that they have the man who they think is responsible for this. Right. This is the man they say is in the video. Uh, this is the man they believe did this murder. And then there was a lot of questions that they weren't quite ready to answer. But we're saying a search warrant is happening right now. Yeah, and I think that part's really important. So now that they have somebody, it, it's hard to build a criminal profile of who this kind of perpetrator mm -hmm. or predator is without knowing who they are. Now they're in that, that process of all of this. They have him. They're inside his home. Is there evidence or anything that shows what he was doing leading up to this murder? Mm -hmm. And also in the hours and the days after the murder. Who was he talking to? Is there anything inside that could be linked to the crime scene? Right. We do not know her cause of death still. We don't know if there was a weapon involved. And, and that's something that the detective was saying too. They, they hold back that information because they don't want to put something out there and then scare off the person they're either trying to talk to or anybody else who could be involved mm -hmm. in the crime because only those people would know mm -hmm. what was there at the crime scene. So they hold a lot close to the vest. I was going to say Sergeant Solis had a difficult job coming out and speaking to us tonight because she wanted to give people information. I think she said she hopes the community can rest easier tonight mm -hmm. knowing that they have a suspect in custody, but also, as you said, keeping a lot of that information, those investigatory mm -hmm. secrets close to the vest because they're still interviewing him. They're still searching his apartment okay. as well. Jamie and I were talking yesterday about how um, struck we were by her family members and her mm -hmm. friends yeah. who spoke yesterday, and they did make a mention of how important it was that all these people came forward with tips. So it'll be interesting to see if one of those tips might have helped as well. And it could be, and it could be a, a combination of mm -hmm. things that led led them to him. If it is DNA, as we're hearing it is, that's mm -hmm. pretty foolproof. But also, he, he they said he lived at that apartment complex yeah. where he was arrested, very close to that Reach 11 trail, which means he's been in that area right. since the crime. And so if you're, if you're walking around and you're visible, there's more people who are aware of what just happened there that could have been calling in those tips, and those can be extremely helpful in terms mm -hmm. of uh, arresting somebody quickly and getting to them quicker than, than you normally would. The other thing I think is going to be really crucial is, is cell phones. Right. Mm -hmm. um, her cell phone and also his. Mm -hmm. That will tell a story too in the days leading up. Was there any communication, any connection between the two of them? Was, was he able to see her on, on social media? Mm -hmm. um, and then also pinging locations. Where was her phone and his phone at the time? Does it put him there at the crime scene at the time that she was on a walk or on mm -hmm. a hike? And, and was there any sort of um, his cell phone in the area of where she was in the days leading up? Was he was he watching? You know, mm -hmm. you just you just don't know. But but a cell phone can tell tell a lot of the story these days. Well, I remember mom saying that she had checked on her and yep. saw pinged saw where she was. Mm -hmm. That Find Me app is fun to use, and you could see where she was. She saw that she was near her home right. and thought, oh, okay, she's near home. I won't worry yet. Um, 
We, we know she lived in that area, right? She, yeah, that's what we're being told, at uh -huh. least by other people, that she did live in that area. And then we also know she worked in North Scottsdale. So her life did revolve in that mm -hmm. in that area for sure. But w now we know how close the, the suspect was living to this crime right. scene. And that's pretty eerie. And oh. that suspect arrested tonight. And we have new video that is just into our newsroom right now. So we want to give you a look at this. This is the suspect who we're told in his 20s. Uh, 23 is what we're being told by sources. So let's take a look at this. Okay, looks right, we're like gonna, we're going to wait on gonna, that. We're getting it into the newsroom right now. We're going to really process quickly. that video yeah, for you. Really but they do have some video that we have seen, and we're looking for um, getting that ready for you uh, I mean, of that arrest. Let me also bring this up, Brianna. It, it also struck me that, um, you know, you've covered the canal killing so closely and yeah. how differently those cases turned out compared to this case, if they have the right person tonight. Sure. I mean, those young women were killed along the canal in the 1990s. They, we didn't have cell phones. We didn't have social media. Mm -hmm. DNA technology wasn't as advanced. So that all of that, this modern technology, clearly played a, a huge role tonight compared to other yes. murders we've covered. Yeah, and that cold case detective I talked to is credited for solving the mm -hmm. canal murders. I mean, he was the lead detective on that case and did talk about how different it is. I mean, if you were able to put somebody's location in a certain place, yeah. that would have changed the game for the canal murders themselves. And then, of course, with, with Brian Patrick Miller, who was convicted mm -hmm. of those crimes, you had his DNA, but he had not been in the system before. Therefore, it took so much longer and they had to resort to genetic genetic genealogy. In this case, they already got a DNA match fast, which is why we know mm -hmm. that he was already in a database. And it just goes to show how quickly you can turn mm -hmm. DNA around too. I mean, it, it is wild, but also the surveillance video. Yeah. That We now know that that video that was being out there shared thousands of times mm -hmm. on social media. As blurry as it was. Yeah. As blurry it as it was, yeah. it, it did play a role. And, and I, as I was watching it last night, something that I took away from it, and you can see it here on mm -hmm. your screen, Yes, it's hard to see, but you can definitely see the way he is running, right? That's a, that's yeah. a very specific sort of walk and run that he does that somebody might have recognized mm -hmm. who lived near him yeah, or saw him, sure. right? Who saw him maybe mm -hmm. on a regular basis. I mean, yeah. you, you, you just don't know exactly what it is that might be able to to help identify him. Where did right, that I video see, come from? I see the, um, I see the in the preview monitor right now. We do have video of the arrest queued up. So let's take a look at this. OK. Okay, so this is a man we are told in his 20s. This is the suspect. This is the man that Phoenix police wanted us to know is in custody tonight. They wanted the community to sleep easy tonight, knowing they have the man who they believe is responsible for this murder. Though they are not telling us much information at this hour, we know that this arrest happened around 6.30 tonight. It happened uh, at a town home that is near Scottsdale and Bell Roads. Uh, this is less than a mile from the trail where 29-year-old Lauren Heike's body was found. Officers are not releasing his name. They said he is being interviewed right now at this hour. Uh, uh, Sergeant Solis said that this man is being interviewed right now and that we would learn his name once he is booked into jail. We're expecting a lot more information to come this uh, tomorrow. So tomorrow we're going to be hearing a lot yeah. from police as far as who this man is. If there was a connection, I think people are really want to know if there was a connection Absolutely. here. Absolutely. I mean, right, right. Because if there wasn't, how did he get to this point? Right. And, and I thought that arrest video was interesting because mm. at, like we said, as blurry as that video was, you can see the dark complexion that they were looking for, that tall, slender build. So mm. any any sort of video is so crucial to a crime case like this. All right. Mm. Brianna, thanks for your yeah. input. We are going to take a quick break and be back right after this. Thank you, Brianna.